we are now able to control materials uh, at the nanoscale, which is much bigger than atomic scales and smaller than micro scales, where you do sort of much of lithography. So what this ability to control the structure of matter on the nanoscale uh, now gives you entirely new ways to control light. At Northeastern University, in my laboratory in the Electronic Materials Research Institute that I direct, we have been developing new materials that will control not only the direction of light propagation, but also the speed of light propagation. So um, ordinary matter, you know, like glass, for instance, uh, has what is known as a positive refractive index. So it bends light in a particular way. It was pointed out in the 1960s by a Russian theoretician, Viktor Veselago, that you could create new materials uh, which would actually have negative refractive indices. Uh, this idea lay dormant for almost 40 years until uh, about 10 to 15 years ago, new materials were made that uh, followed uh, Veselago's ideas and demonstrated negative refraction. Negative refraction, it turns out, is entirely compatible with the laws of physics, including Maxwell's equations. They do not violate any uh, laws. Um, they, so what happens in negative uh, refractive materials is that uh, you can, you're utilizing uh, materials which have both negative permittivity and negative permeability. In such materials, over a finite spectral window that is a range of frequencies will have negative refractive index. So this is one way of making negative refractive index materials. The other way of making negative refractive index materials is to take matter and make periodic arrays or what is known as a photonic crystal. Photonic crystal is similar to an atomic crystal. That is, it's a periodic arrangement of elements, but not atoms, but in this case, they are optical scatterers. These scatterers or this photonic crystal can be designed depending on how, what the materials you use and what the spacing is uh, to achieve either positive refractive index or negative refractive index in certain uh, spectral regions. So why is negative refractive index exciting? Okay. Firstly, it is an entirely new way for light to propagate. Uh, and so all the mat all ma materials in nature turn out to have positive refractive index. There are, there could be arrangements of certain materials in nature. Um, where you could get negative refractive index, but we haven't um, identified them uh, naturally. So they're all at the moment artificial and man-made. There are several things you can do with negative refractive index materials. One of the first things we showed was that you can make a lens out of a flat piece of negative refractive index material. The reason, for instance, my glass is curved is because it has, the glass has positive refractive index. If you took glass and you made a flat material like your window, it will not focus light. However, if, you, if, the, if the glass was made of negative refractive index material, a flat window will in fact, or a flat lens will focus light. This we demonstrated in uh, 2003 that you could have 
for the first time ever a flat lens and this paper which was published in Nature in 2003 was listed among the breakthroughs for that year by the journal Science. What happens is quite magical, you know, we had a photonic crystal which is composed of scatterers. The source light comes and hits this lens, it is scattered around, but then it focuses magically on the other side. Such a flat lens made of negative index material has some very unusual properties. It does not, for instance, have an optical axis. So you can put the object anywhere and you will have an image correspondingly. That does not happen for ordinary uh, le curved lenses. Another very in interesting uh, and important aspect of negative materials or negative refractive index materials is that um, uh, you can achieve uh, super resolution imaging beyond the diffraction limit. The diffraction limit is there because light has a finite wavelength and so you cannot actually see, you cannot distinguish objects which are separated by less than half the wavelength if you use propagating waves. What uh, is a unique feature of the negative index materials is that uh, they can focus not just propagating waves, but also evanescent waves. And when you fo reconstruct the evanescent waves, uh, what happens is that is you can then beat the diffraction limit. We constructed a material using nanotechnology, which is comprised of metallic wires in a matrix in a dielectric matrix. So this is actually gold wires in uh, an alumina matrix. This, uh, this acts as a lens for infrared radiation. And we showed that using such a lens that you can actually do imaging at a resolution of a quarter of the wavelength, which is much smaller than the diffraction limit, which is half a wavelength. Thus, with this material, we have been able to uh, achieve what is called super resolution imaging by beating the diffraction limit. The uh, other aspect of these novel materials is that uh, you can also control the speed of light. One of the goals uh, of optical computers and is to create uh, devices uh, that will actually do computation using light, not electrons. Currently, you know, all our computers use electronics, not photonics. However, you could use optical elements, but there's one problem, which is that light is too fast. And so it is difficult to do uh, operations like gating uh, and so on, uh, where, uh, you, and, and storing of information. So in order to do that, it is necessary to actually slow light down. And negative index materials offer new ways of being able to do that. We have, uh, in fact, come up with some very interesting proposals on how to not only slow light, but even to stop light using negative refractive index materials. In a broader context, uh, negative in refractive index materials is one type of optical materials which are new and which can be achieved using nanotechnology. Uh, you, the ability to create nanomaterials is crucial uh, in order to uh, you have to be able to ma manipulate matter on the nanoscale because the wavelength of light, for instance, is about a few hundred nanometers. And so you can, in fact, create a, a, a variety of nanomaterials which can have very different functions 
and you can use them to achieve what is known as transformation optics, uh, where for instance you can bend light and make it go around a corner, uh, you can squeeze a beam, you can expand a beam and you can you know provide for instance focus independent of the direction of light using this notions of transformation optics and using materials. The biggest difficulty with nanomaterials and uh, negative nanomaterials is that you have to cut down the losses and that is at optical frequencies uh, if the losses the absorption in the material is too high then uh, your propagation is cut down and you won't get a lot of light going through. So this is the biggest challenge uh, and the one of the many ways that we are trying to overcome that is to include gain in the material. It is not just a passive material, but it is an active nonlinear material which also amplifies the light that goes through. By this gain compensation, we are hoping to overcome this big problem of losses in the material.